Well, I want to thank everybody for coming out today to honor the, the memory of Wangari Mathai. Um, my name is Greg Cronin, and I just want to give you a little bit of history about why this bench is here. Um, it really all kind of started with, with Michael and Brady, who I don't know how many years ago it was, but they, they created a group called Bold Leaders, which brings a lot of high school students from a lot of different countries, including African countries, to the United States, and that's how I met Bold Leaders, was I hosted one of their students from, from Tanzania. And it was two years ago that they started a group called Bold Food Fellows. So the African Bold Food Fellows, as you can see inscribed there, was an exchange between American and Kenyan and, and Ugandan um, urban agriculturalists. And so last year I sponsored three Bold Food Fellows in my lab and it was this time last year, in fact a year ago, that, that Wangari passed away and I had a Bold Food Fellow working in my lab named Rose Chiteva who knew Wangari from, from living in Nairobi and she was very influenced by Wangari as was I and I'm probably, you know, everybody here, that's why you're here. Um, Rose wanted to plant fruit trees in Wangari's honor. And so there are five fruit trees here. There's a plum tree here, two plum trees over there, and then two pear trees at the other end. They're very young trees, so we're not letting them produce fruit yet, although the pear trees each produce one pear this year. Um, I ate the first one and the second one disappeared. Well, it was at the end of a branch and that branch looked like it was about ready to break. <laughs> um, so the, these fruit trees, three of them were planted in, in Wangari's honor. And when Rose first came to me and said, you know, she had this idea to plant trees, at first I was, I hate to admit, discouraging her because it had taken me a year and a half to get permission to plant the first two plum trees and she had maybe three weeks left in the United States. But then I said, you know what, go for it. And so I think Wangari's spirit is still with us and it was Wangari's spirit that allowed Rose to make as much progress in two weeks as it took me to do in a year and a half. Because Wangari is such an important person to Kenyans but people around the world that we asked permission to plant in her honor and permission was granted in the matter of, of weeks instead of years. So that's why these trees are here. Um, I wanted people to know why the trees were here, which is what this bench does. It, it educates people about why the trees are here. It's in the honor of Wangari Mathai, and it was sponsored by the, the Sustainable Campus Program, which that is their emblem on the backside of the bench. So a lot of people came together to make this happen. So um, I'll share kind of the influence that Wangari has had on me. I, I never had the opportunity to meet her, which is, I feel, you know, I missed out. Um, and I know many of the people here, you know, are her friends and, and had the, the really the, the, the blessed opportunity to, to know Wangari. But you know, I, know, I only know Wangari from, from her writings and from seeing her in videos. And I remember one of the videos I saw, they were interviewing experts from around the world about sustainable development and what sustainability was. And all these experts were talking about solar power and electric cars and you know, reusing water, um, green buildings, those kinds of things. And Wangari stated it so beautifully and simply, she said, Sustainability is about having clean water to drink. It's about having fresh, healthy food to eat. That's what sustainability is to me. And that's the truth. <laughs> um, you know, if, if we all have clean food and water, friendship, peace, you know, everything that Wangari was about, that's what I think we all could, could strive for. And um, I, I, I think Karen is going to speak um, how you're, you're not. Do you have your poem with you? I don't want to put her on the spot, but um, is Karen... Is anybody from Kenya here? Uh, yeah, somebody a few. from Kenya should speak next. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but I will after they speak. The, the, the way Karen met Wangari is doing some plea tranting in Haiti. And I, I have worked a, a, a few times in Haiti, um, and that's one of my goals. I, I formed a nonprofit this summer called Yonsei Lamu, which means one love in Creole. 
and I know Hagi was very special to, to Wangari, and hopefully <laughs> my organization can contribute something to, to plant trees and reforest um, Hagi. So that is the influence that she's had on me personally, and I do want to invite anybody to step forward and, and share your, your thoughts about Wangari. So I'm going to zip it now and let somebody else speak. Both of you. Oh my God. And there is a microphone if, if you don't want to, if you don't have a booming voice. Jumbo. 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 The way I would describe, I know Wangari Mathai, I met her twice. Um, one, she was, the ch when she came back from United States, when she finished her school, I'm sure most of you must have read about her, she was the chairman of um, anatomy, uh, veterinary anatomy at Kabere campus. And at that time, she was very influential to women about planting trees. That's when I got to meet Wangari Mathai. The second time I met her was I moved. I lived, I lived somewhere in the western part, that's Parklands, and I moved to South B. Apparently, she was my neighbor. That's the second time I met Wangari Mathai. Now, from <clears throat> the way she has influenced me, me myself, is I remember she was at a conference in the year 2006. And she talked about, I don't know whether you guys have uh, heard about it, she talked about um, the hummingbird. Most of you must, if you, look, if you just Google hummingbird, you read the story. She talked about the hummingbird and a fire. Not, uh, she was trying to associate the, the, the fire with poverty. And when she talked about the hummingbird, there were all these animals in, um, I would say in, um, um, in um, what do you call, um, like in a century, and then a fire erupted. All these animals started running away, but the hummingbird stood up and said, do you know what, I can do something about this. There was a, there was a stream, a river stream on the side, and all these animals were like, well, you try and do it and you're going to get burned. The hummingbird said, I will try and do something about it. He started flying into the river, getting a little drop of water with his little beak and pouring it onto the what? Onto the fire. The bird did that very, very many times. And you can imagine the elephants were there with the long tanks. They would have used their tanks to get the water and it, was, it would have been faster. But the humming, when the hummingbird was asked, what are you doing and why are you doing this? This was the answer he gave. I am doing what I can. That is a very big message for all of us. We can do what we can to sustain nature, to plant a tree so that our kids and kids of your kids will enjoy what God has given us, this wonderful earth. And that is my main point here is you can do and we can do what we can all of us doesn't matter the color it doesn't matter where you come from all of us are capable of doing what we can to sustain this nature and that's my message thank you Else want to speak? Well, I'll I speak see. if there's none other. All right. So, as Greg said, um, I knew Wangari primarily through um, um, tree planting efforts in Haiti. Um, I met her right after she won the first time, right after she won the Nobel Peace Prize, and it was at a meeting where Al Gore was giving his on a power back when it was a PowerPoint, 
his presentation of an inconvenient truth that eventually became the award-winning movie and then Wangari was there too and um, I talked to her and um, told her about the reforestation plans that the Lobby Fund of Haiti um, had and she said I've always loved Haiti it's the country of the first um, slave rebellion and the first independent black republic and I've always felt a special bond and I said well now there's a lot of problems with deforestation and Haiti really needs to somebody to help jump start and inspire people to reforest the country and she said I'd be glad I'd be glad to help and so it took it took a while probably about a year and a half the same amount of time to, to get all the arrangements made and the visas for the um, for the Kenyans to come to Haiti and all like that but they finally arrived and just went through the countryside meeting with the peasant associations in, in Haiti and discussed um, reforestation and, and what what it took to get people mobilized mobilized not just one or two people but get, get a whole population mobilized to um, to plant trees and she also always said that um, planting trees is just an entree into a community it's it's standing up for your rights and standing up for democracy and and the and the rights of all people where you organize people through tree planting but then you also organize them on on civic on civic action and holding the government accountable and and ensuring that policy makers and governments carry out and do what they do what they do so she was she was very um strategic about how she approached it. It was not only in the environment but mobilizing people to stand up for their rights as well. And so, um, and she also, I got my master's degree in, glo in global studies at, sorry, DU. That's quite <laughs> but um, she wrote um, my letter of recommendation and so it's, and it's, uh, um, and I knew her, her daughter and her um, son-in-law, and they're still working and carrying on the work. And the Green Belt Movement is is very strong network now. Um, that is carrying on the work, carrying on her memory. So I'm glad everybody's here because we're here to carry on her memory as well. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. And if, if you want to, there, there is a, a microphone here. If you want to, if you don't feel like talking real loud, but you still want to say something, feel free to step over and, and use the microphone. I think the, only, the thing I'd say about Wangari Mathai is relationship to all leaders and the work that we've done with students in Kenya from all around to the common name. And as a as a common name and as a com you know person who is known for doing something unusual and different and outside the normal way of doing things, what we would say is that she's created permission for others to do the same and to participate in that same conversation. And that's a, I can't think of anything more profound than that, that you've done something that is, you know, the impact will continue on and on and on in ways much more profound than any program or government activity or politician could ever hope to achieve, simply because she stood for something and she said, I'm going to do this. And I think the, you know, the story that we have a storybook in our house that, about her and it's pretty clear from the story at least that she would have done what she did if people joined her or not. She would have gone around and planted trees and just this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to be the hummingbird. What was nice about the, what, what she did and the people of Kenya is that everybody joined her and it became the thing that, that they do. And that, that, that created a whole new conversation which I think is an incredible legacy. Ha, 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 ha.
Well, to be quite honest with you, I was unaware of her significance in the world until I looked things up. And when she won the Nobel Peace Prize, these are the words that really stood out to me. She said, in the course of history, there comes a time when humanity is called to shift a new level of consciousness, to reach a higher moral ground, a time when we have to shed our fear and give hope to each other. This time is now. We are called to assist the earth, to heal her wounds, and in the process, heal our own. Indeed, and to embrace the creation in it, all its diversity, beauty, and wonder. This will happen if we see the need to revive our sense of belonging to a larger family, which we have shared our evolutionary process. To me, that's saying, uh, you can't protect the environment until you empower other people. We are all a unit. We are all this big family. This earth belongs to all of us, regardless of creed, shape, or size. So, especially for us young people, we have to make sure we give back. Because when everything is gone, who's going to be there? We're going to be left standing. So we have to empower and learn from what she did and make sure that we teach each other and take care of each other and keep this earth, our earth, for our children and for everybody else that's here. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Winston Grady Willis. I'm chair of the Department of African and African American Studies here at MSU Denver. And uh, we've got colleagues here, Professor Alvin Fenderson and Dr. Douglas Impondi. Um, one thing I would just like to say, and I know other folks will weigh in, but just on behalf of our department, one, I just want to reiterate how important uh, Dr. Greg Cronin's role has been, and he really deserves uh, just a huge, huge Thank you. Um, thank you. Wow, thank you. <laughs> but the thing that I just wanted to say briefly, sometimes when we talk about our heroes, our, our heroines, or as we often say in the black community, our sheroes, um, sometimes we, we, we tend to sugarcoat or make more palatable the the experiences of individual whether it's dr martin luther king you name it and so it's really important to understand in terms of professor mathai that she was so courageous so brave in the face of a persecution in, in in the face of a government at that particular moment right in her native land that would do almost anything to try to stop her so it's, it's really important this it's about the planting of trees, it's about sustainability, but it's also about just the sheer force of will that is so inextricably bound to, to, to the just the role, the work that women do throughout the global African world. And so as, as we raise her up, we not only raise her up as a Nobel laureate, uh, as an incredible teaching professor, but just as just an incredibly courageous soul who had to endure a great deal of hardship to accomplish the many things that she did. 